So kicking us off at number six, I'm actually going to put Brosnan as the least bastardy. He just didn't do anything shady as far as I'm concerned. <coughs> Jesus. In Tomorrow Never Dies, when Paris gives him information on Carver, her husband, he tells her, you don't have to do that. So he's reluctant about using her. That's not very bastardy. Some people will say he was the first Bond to kill a woman in cold blood. To them I say, so what? She tried to torture him to death and was about to kill many more. She's evil, and being a woman doesn't nullify that she got what she deserved. You wouldn't kill me. Well, I'm as surprised as anyone else that Dalton would rank so lowly, but to be honest, I don't think he ever does anything that bad. He kills in cold blood more than the other Bonds, sure, but to be fair, they all deserved it. Car. Thanks, Mr. Chris. Guess what? His name was Sharky. <laughs> That's it. Take her out and sink her. Okay, Clark. Casco! Compliments of Sharky. The reason he ranks higher than Brosnan for me is, well, his unique way of waking up his leading ladies. Make a sound, and you're dead. Oh, and it's because of how devious he is when taking down Sanchez, making him paranoid and thinking that the people that are loyal to him can't be trusted basically has him doing Bond's job for him by killing off the people in his closest circles. I guess it's time to start turning overhead. So for that nasty act of deviousness, Dalton gets the five of hearts. I'm going to give the fourth spot to Lazenby. Now, Lazenby doesn't kill anyone in his only film, except random goons, but they don't really register. So he has quite a low kill count. But you don't need to kill people to be a bastard in this list. So after we have the love montage, he falls in love with Tracy. But when he gets to piss Gloria, he cheats on her. Not once, not even twice. That's cheating. I must see you tonight. Nine o'clock? Ten. Well, back to work. You've no idea how it's piling up. And considering this film is going for a love story angle, where he ends up marrying Tracy, I just can't forgive his infidelity. So for cheating on his blushing bride-to-be, Lazenby is a bigger bastard than Dalton. You heard it here first, folks. Put down those cards. For this spot, I'm going to go with Roger Moore. I know, I'm as shocked as you are. Calm down. Just hear me out, alright? So need I remind you all that in his very first film, he tricks an innocent virgin into sleeping with him. And as a result, this tarot card reader loses all her superpowers to predict the future. That is such a shady thing for him to have done. But you do believe... I mean, really believe in the cards. Well, they have never lied to me. Then they won't now. Pick one. before it was given. Strangely enough, somehow, so did I.
Moore would go on to do other questionable things as Bond. I'm afraid I have to hurt you! But for me, nothing tops what he does to Solitaire. So for taking this innocent woman's virginity by deceit, Roger Moore is number third in the Bastard Olympics. Num number third? <laughs> Jin. Bastard number two, please. And I'm going to give second spot to Mr. Stationery. Now, I want to start by saying that he is not my favourite Bond, but I can't deny that he did some interesting things with his portrayal, which I'll get into. Also, I'm glad that the producers picked Craig over Clive Owen. Oh, fuck off. I'm Clive Owen. That's mental. So in Skyfall, Craig's Bond and Severin have a very revealing convo. Basically, Bond Sherlocks her and reveals to her what her backstory is. Tattoo on your wrist is Macau sex trade. You belong to one of the houses. What were you, 12? 13? I'm guessing he was your way out. Perhaps you thought you were in love. That was a long time ago. You know nothing about it. I know when a woman is afraid and pretending not to be. You can tell from her reaction, he's pretty much nailing it. There's a lot of truth to what he's saying. I don't know about anyone else, but if a person ever told me they were sexually abused and trafficked for sex as a child, my thirst force wouldn't run into banging that person. Well, you'll never guess what Bond does. He breaks into her yacht, bypasses her security, invades her shower, uninvited, and bangs her! Get a load of this guy! Now, this character caused quite a stir in the UK, at least, with the usual suspects, and I feel dirty, because I can kind of see where they're coming from. When a film gives a character such a tragic backstory, usually you'd be safe in assuming that the movie will then revolve around that person. <laughs> Not the case in Skyfall. Bond just chews her up and spits her out. I win. What do you say to that? <sighs> it's a waste of good scotch. So while I can understand the opinion columnist's point of view, it's certainly beyond the pale for Craig's Bond to do something like this. But if these critics ever had their way, I am sure that the Bond character would be homogenised to such an extent that the character would end up resembling this. I'm talking about the guy on the left, by the way. <laughs> now, I've put this in second spot, but I actually think this is the worst thing Bond has ever done. But the reason Craig comes in second is because I don't think he was ever comfortable with being a bastard. The same can't be said for number one. Who are you? Bond. James Bond. So yeah, he was always going to end up on top, wasn't he? <laughs> I'm going to draw primarily from the Terence Young films. I think the questionable things Bond did in his films were more in furtherance of showing the anti-hero nature of the character, rather than just for effect. So let's start with... Thunderball. So before Bond tells Domino that her brother is dead, he bangs her. Right before he tells her the bad news. That is in such bad taste. Um, I thought maybe he could have banged her afterwards, but then she would have been at her most vulnerable and emotional, so I say. So, okay, maybe that would have been even worse. But still, pretty below the board there, Bond. I think he got the point. In Doctor No, even though he knows this woman is a baddie, he still shags her before, before handing her over to the police. What's, what's going on? Forgive me, book her, Superintendent, will you? And, uh, be careful of her nail varnish. Uh, 
When Bond is watching the gypsy fight in From Russia With Love, you'll notice that the filmmaker doesn't clue you into how you should react while watching it, whether you should enjoy it as entertainment, or whether you should disapprove. Once this fight gets underway, there are no reaction shots from anybody, until midway through when Bond is given the only close-up in the entire scene. As you can see, his face doesn't betray much. I want you to consider for a moment how safe the filmmakers could have played this. Terence Young could easily have had Bond looking visibly uncomfortable, but he doesn't. I'm not a body language expert, but I think a person touching their face would suggest discomfort, and you'll see Connery twitches slightly. We will learn afterwards that he wishes for the fight to be stopped, so why does this make him a bastard? I've seen a few reviewers of this film say that the gypsy fight drags. I disagree, I think it's quite well choreographed, but it does go on quite long, but I think it's for a reason, and the reason is it makes it abundantly clear that Bond was not going to intervene. If this fight wasn't interrupted, then Bond would likely have just sat there watching dispassionately as two women fought to the death. So I'll leave that question with you. Would you have considered that a bastardy thing to have done? That's why I love Terence Young, by the way, just that he was able to ask those questions, but without asking them, if you know what I mean. On the Orient Express, after Kerem Bey gets killed, Bond thinks he's being set up for an ambush. He thinks Tanya is about to double-cross him, and as a result, he hits her. Because we know Tanya has been blackmailed into going along with the espionage, it's all the more uncomfortable to watch Bond hitting her. The one thing you will gather when watching a Bond film is that, I would say 98% of the time, he's in control. But the question is, how does he behave when he is not? And as you will see in the Connery films, in the Dalton films, is that they have a very unpleasant side when they're not in control, and they'll do anything to recover it. <laughs> and that's the dark side of Bond. Some films will show it better, some actors will do it better. But for my money, no one did it better <laughs> than Sir Sean. So, for playing it fast and loose with consent, for using women as human shields, and as bullet shields, Connery is the bastard balls of all the Bonds. And if any of you disagree with my selection... You've had your six.